Hey all, so this is War 5 from last weekend, and we are starting off with Mangog here. You'll notice that I'm bringing Reed again. I have Shocker for some mutant fights later on, since he is also Tactic. And then I brought She-Hulk along, both to help out Reed, but also I want to call out those power stings apply to tech champions, so you'll see Shocker benefit from that as well. This is a very simple Reed fight. He can take Mangog almost anywhere on the map, and obviously Aspect of Evolution tends to be a bit more dangerous, but he's not there. So basically the only danger is getting hit by Snap Lights there as the AI just kind of idles up and then throws them. Love that. Hoping we can banish that to the Shadow Realm before too long because it's definitely getting on my nerves. But we have to petrify up, and so even triggering Mystic Dispersion gets uh, hit pretty hard by that 80%. At this point in the fight, I feel like I am getting close enough to my second special two that I'm just assuming he's probably not going to throw another special at all this entire fight, because now his power gain is being reversed. He's gaining almost nothing from being struck. We can just let Willpower finish this out, and we will because that means that we don't risk critting and triggering spiked armor. That said, Reed does have physical resistance, so even spiked armor doesn't hit him as hard as it does some others. Moving on to Kitty, I want to call out that she is currently bugged on this node. Now, as intended, hitting her and removing the prowess from aggression prowess does not trigger the flourish. Similarly, when she throws a special and then removes all of her own prowess at the end of it, that also doesn't trigger the flourish. Both of those are as intended. However, if she phases from having three or more prowess and you cause her to, or and you miss against her because she's dashing and you try and hit her, that will trigger the flourish when she pays the price of removing a few prowess at the end of the phase. That is not intended, that will be fixed, but while it is here, it is something to watch out for. Now, all that aside, Shocker flat out does have prowess removal in his kit on his mediums, so we are expecting some of these flourish buffs. That's just part of the game, right? So here she throws it again. Remember, with this tactic, the trick is get your taunts while the opponent is under a bar of power, and then bait as quickly as you possibly can, unless your name is Shocker and you have 100 Vibroshock charges and you know that your special 2 is absolutely going to end the fight no matter what. I think that was probably overkill by a factor of 50. This is my first time bringing my new rank 2 Shocker to war, so forgive me for going a little too far. Anyway, that obviously worked hopefully gives you um, a little bit of a blueprint for using options that are not quite as much of a nuclear bomb as he is. We move on to this bishop. Obviously, the risk here with bishop is that he will throw a special one because Shocker has no resistance to incinerate, and then we'll have to dance a bit, and that won't be fun. However, he is not tactic, so we don't have to worry about Daunted. We don't have to worry about Unblockable unless he somehow gets to 10 or more prowess. Actually, this is a 7-star bishop, so he probably needs like 25. But there's no way that that's going to happen, because Shocker has prowess removal and is a tech and only lands um, physical hits. And so he's never going to have any prowess, and so we can do our block dex dex for the special 2 there. And the specials do basically no damage. I think you're going to see me just go for the special two here. Yup, because after that kitty fight, I know that 60 is again going to be way more than is necessary. Let's see, 9,000 took off 3%, so yeah, again, almost an order of magnitude too much. Shocker's good. You may have also noticed the Power Stinks trigger when Bishop threw his special too, because we do have that help from Reed and She-Hulk. Moving on to Spidey Supreme here, now that Hard Knock Life is not on this node, you do have to watch for blocking specials because they will go unblockable, but that is pretty much the only threat. 
you can parry as much as you want. And so I don't actually think this is a good um, placement. I'm wondering if our opposing officer maybe still thought that this did have hard knock life, or maybe it was just a path split. That happens. Uh, we do accidentally block the first two hits there, or maybe it was intentional. I can't remember, because his his special does get me sometimes. We use a light attack into the stun to make sure that our special lands clearly, um, as opposed to him like dexing out of the way as we throw the special, because that does happen to me sometimes, if I just go to parry and then hit the special. Notice we took some direct damage back because Reed's special 2 does have a shock. Probably could have played this just not triggering the special 2 at all and spammed special 1. He would have gotten a little more power, but we wouldn't have taken the damage back. Bit of a trade-off. I honestly don't know which one's better. I was comfortable doing this. But it's something that you want to know before you head in. You may have seen me take this thing before. I honestly forget whether the first one was ascended or not. This one certainly is. But again, the most important thing on this particular fight is do not use the suppression pre-fight. You need the healing control, but controlling things combat power while hitting him is actively bad unless you have an unstoppable counter, which Reed does not. Beyond that, it doesn't really matter how you play this as long as you have the dexes down. You can try and go for heavy counters after the specials. I don't love them here. I, yeah, it's just not my favorite thing given the length of his dex. It's perfectly fine if you're not rooted, but while the root makes it very easy to build those regens against thing, which is actually good for Reed in this fight, I do find it makes the heavy counter for the special one a little bit trickier. Special two is still plenty safe. But as you will see, I am comfortable with the fact that Reed's special two has three hits. And so I'm mostly sticking to heavies until I see an opening to push him to uh, 12 hits, or sorry, 12 rock stacks, and then to throw my special two. You see we are now at full ramp. He is at just down to one regen now, but I am expecting him to throw this special. That will root us. This is basically the, um, the risk of the fight right here, I do want to call out. If Thing does not play nice and does not throw the specials, it is possible for you to lose your debuffs. If that happens, just don't panic, right? You're just heading back up to your next special too. It would definitely make the fight longer, but I think it is a good enough fight that that's not really something that I would worry about. You just have to make sure you don't panic. You have a full five minutes. Thankfully, it didn't happen to us there, and we are now in front of Storm. This one is a little bit spooky, I'm not going to lie, because she's going to gain an absolute ton of prowess. And we are not really going to be able to hit her all that much during the incinerate portion of this fight. So those prowess from aggression are just going to continue to stack. The good news is she doesn't have a lot of health and we've seen what Shocker can do. So this should be totally fine. We just cannot get hit by a special. Because even with the steadfast, it is just... I. Don't trust it. Now, one thing you'll see me do here is I do take advantage of that parry landing. I burn a few charges to keep our uh, debuffs up. And that is mainly because as we head into the shock part of the node, I want to be able to hit her freely, basically, with the benefit of that combat power rate reduction, just so that if this doesn't kill, which it does, I haven't pushed her red. But it did. <laughs> but if you were using a smaller shocker, I still think that that would have been the safe thing to do. Because if you come out of that heavy and she is not down, maybe you had some incinerates on you and inequity was causing some problems, you really, really do not want to eat a special three with all of those prowess. Now I did have an invulnerability boost running anyway, but 
I don't know, let's pretend you didn't or you got hit. That is the important thing for this fight. And so I do think the pre-fights were helpful. I do think it was worth throwing the heavy, burning a few charges to uh, keep the debuffs up for just a little bit longer so that we could safely go all out, throw our special two, and end the fight basically only half ramped. And that's against a mini boss health pool. Shocker is really, really good, y'all. You'll definitely be seeing more of him uh, from me on these war teams for the rest of the season. Excellent debut from him. Very happy I pulled him twice from the Holiday Crystals. And very happy that I had some tech catalysts. Extremely worth it. Anyway, hope y'all enjoyed this one. And until next time, thanks so much for watching. And take care.